Allah has become angry with him and has cursed him and has prepared from him a great punishment. So in these two verses, the verse number 92 and verse number 93, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about killing of a Muslim brother by a Muslim. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has forbidden this. In his farewell sermon, he said that the life, the honor, and the property of a Muslim is forbidden for the Muslim brother. So to protect the life and honor and property of a Muslim is the due responsibility and duty of all the Muslim brothers. Killing of another Muslim brother is forbidden. It is a major sin and the punishment for it has been mentioned as hell. <coughs> now killing or murdering anybody can be of two types. And I'll be talking about both the types and the punishments by law suggested by Quran. The first type of killing or murder is intentional killing. Intentional killing would be when the person who killed or the person who murdered did it intentionally, knowingly. The person had planned it and he knew that he was going to do it. So the first form is intentional killing. And the second form is unintentional killing or murder in which the person doesn't know but accidentally or <coughs> accidentally or unintentionally, unwantingly, it happened that the person got killed. Now, the first type of killing, that is the intentional planned killing, the punishment for this form of killing has been mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 178, where Allah has said, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu, Qutiba alaykum ul-qisasu fil qatla al-hurru bil-hurri wal-abdu bil-abdi wal-unza bil-unza faman ufiya lahu min akhihi shayin fattiba'un bil-maruf wa ada'un ilayhi bi-ihsan O believers, kisas O believers, kisas, that is the just retribution has been made obligatory regarding the cases of killing free for the free, the slave for the slave, and the woman for a woman. And if something is remitted to a guilty brother, then remission shall be adhered to with fairness and the restitution shall be made in good manner. This is an alleviation from your sustainer and an act of his grace. And for him who willfully transgresses the bounds of what is right, there is grievous suffering in store. So in this verse of verse 178 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has suggested, to, suggested the law for punishment of intentional killing. Remember, there are four laws suggested by Quran. These laws are the punishments which have been uh, which have been ordered by Allah in Quran, and there is no option other than these laws to be implemented in an Islamic state. Like for killing, it is the law of kisas we uh, we have mentioned here. For adultery, we will be studying in Surah Nur. And then for theft, there is the law of cutting the hands, that is the law of Sarka. And then there will be the law of Qazaf. We shall be talking about these in Surah Nur in detail. <coughs> so these are the laws which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered and they are obligatory to be implemented in an Islamic state. So here for the intentional killing, Two options are being given. Number one is the just retribution 
uh, or the kasas. It means blood for blood or life for life. Actually means what? That the person who murdered, the murderer will be killed. And according to the normal international laws, the murderer is uh, killed like by hanging or by putting in an electric chair or being electrocuted or sometimes being shot in the head, etc. But according to the law of Islam, law of Kisas or law of just retribution, how is it? The murderer is supposed to be killed in exactly the same manner and exactly the same way that he actually killed. Remember one thing, punishments in Islam, number one, are very severe and intense. Number two, they are immediately conducted and proceeded with. And thirdly, they are, they are publicly prosecuted. All the punishments are conducted and they are carried on publicly for the mere reason to make it as a moralistic for the society. The killing of the person, of the murderer in kasas, caning, cutting of hands, all these punishments are conducted or persecuted publicly because when the society and the people around will be observing all that, will be a witness to the punishment, this will teach the society a lesson. And the person who will be a witness to this punishment will definitely be so terrified of the punishment that they will be avoiding all those evil deeds in future. And in fact, all these punishments, like the laws of punishment which have been mentioned in Quran, are so intense and so severe and then carried on publicly that this is one of the points which has been raised against the, um, the non-Muslims or the non-believers and as a point of criticism against the teachings and against the laws of Quran. Just to defame the teachings of Quran, they normally say, it is normally said regarding these laws of Islam that Muslims are inhuman. They kill the murderers by torturing them, by torturing them, they don't kill the murderers in a straightforward way of just hanging them or electrocuting them. No, they torture their murderers. And all of the people in the society, they sit and they witness the whole process. These Muslims, they are sadists, they are oppressors, they are persecutors, they are tyrants, and finally they are terrorists. It is not so. This is the punishment which has been which has been ordered and made obligatory by Allah because as Allah says Surah Baqarah verse 179 Allah says fil albab and this part of the verse actually is how we need to refute all those criticizing and trying to defame the laws of Quran Allah says here, I repeat, وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقَسَاسِ حَيَاتٌ يَعُولِ الْبَابِ And for in the law of just retribution, there is life for you, O you who have been endowed with insight. If you have insight, if you have wisdom, and if you, you can comprehend, you would realize that these laws being so strict and so very severe and intense and harsh, the purpose is, saving human life. You know what? A statistics was carried out and a research was carried out and the number of deaths because of murder in one million deaths in different states was recorded. And when the statistics were just came out, they were so shocking for the non-Muslim states that for every million deaths, in US, there were 85,000 deaths because of murder. In England, 75,000. In France, almost 56,000. In Germany, 48,000 or 42,000. And in Saudi Arabia, Islamic State of Saudi Arabia, where the law of this Qasas is implemented on the soil, there was just 25 deaths out of a million which were because of murder. 
So it is the safety and the security of the human life which is which is being secured like this. Now in the same verse, verse 178 of Surah Al-Baqarah, the second option for intentional murder which has been mentioned as is what? It is an option of remittance. It is an option of remittance and his restitution will be paid. And the remittance is of the punishment of the murderer by the relatives of the person who was killed. And in return, the murderer, when his life will now be safe, the murderer will be, uh, will hence have to make a restitution and this will have to be paid. And this will be in the form of the ransom or the blood money as Quran calls as the dia. Any form of money which has to be given. This order of the blood money was not, it was not permissible. It was no option given to the followers of the previous prophets. It is just an option given to the followers of Prophet Sallallahu and that is why Prophet Sallallahu has been reported to say that I have brought an easy and a convenient religion. Now, I would want to briefly explain why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, other than, other than just murdering the, killing the murderer, has given this option of blood money is. Number one, because there are times there are going to be occasions when the relatives of the murderer may just want to forgive. They must, they might just develop a soft corner for the murderer and they just might want to forgive. So an option for remission has been opened. The second type of condition is that there might be a situation or the scenario might be that the person who was killed and the person who is killing that it is mur murdered person and the murderer both are of the same family. Like a brother killing a brother, the son killing a father, the son killing his mother. So under this situation, the family of the murdered or the killed person would obviously not want the murderer to be killed or hanged or whatever. And the third reason is the economic reason or the economic constraints. You know, the person who was killed might have been a bread earner for the family. He might have been a bread earner for the family and after his death, there would be a huge economic constraints for the family left behind. So under these situations, rather than killing the murderer and taking revenge from the murderer, instead of that, taking the blood money might be a better option because this might turn out to be a great monetary or economic support for the widowed and for the orphan. So Islam is a very practical religion. And remember that blood money which has been mentioned here, there has been a blood money for the intentional killing. This has not been fixed either in Quran or in hadith the blood money for the intentional murder has been just left to the decision and the discretion of the judge of the court of the law of the time or the land and the judge of the court will decide according to the conditions prevailing and according to the requirements of the the family left behind or according to the conditions of killing or the conditions of the status of the murderer now the second form of killing is unintentional killing 